And there's a long tradition uh, in our part of the world related to the uh, necessity of independence and even closure of the scientific world uh, because the scientific world uh, should be protected against the world of power. But we think that the kind of problems we envisage in nature, in the environment, in spatial ordering, in the future, in our type of society, necessitate interaction. And now we are on the edge uh, of a new era, and the question is, should we jump or not? Uh, should we jump into what we call a policy learning model, which is more or less similar to what Professor uh, Innetveld has been uh, telling you? Shouldn't we move towards a kind of interaction between policymakers and science in, let's say, defining the problem, learning how to best solve them, uh, and orient in a far better way ourselves to the problems at hand? Uh, we had an international review of our activities. Uh, a lot of scientists and policymakers came to us and said, well, and we asked them, well, what's our scientific performance and what's our, what's our societal performance? And what they say is said at the end of the day, and that's why we are at, at that edge, is that your science is okay, uh, basically, but your policy learning part of your organization is poor. And that's, I think, is the challenge. Uh, and maybe it's also a challenge for some of you when you're in those early stages of delivering data on request, you have to but realize that at the end of the day, when you want to become really effective, you have to move towards also what Professor Innenfeld has been saying, a policy learning type of model. Um, as you know that in 1987, Mrs. Brundtland with her commission recommended that a commission committee should be established in order to um, assist those countries that needed that in developing a more sustainable future. Well, uh, we thought that it was a good idea to pick up that idea again and to see if we could get it floating in this year. We are only able to try to promote this now and to get it off the ground, but further on, this initiative should be continued by third parties who are uh, really involved in that. We need to improve the internal processes. As an industry, we need to take into account at the early steps of our projects what the impact on the environment will be. We need to adjust our processes to the seasons and all other aspects of life. And I think we also have to take more account on what's happening in the outside world. But that, again, is where you can help us by harmonizing that and making sure yeah, there is only one type of standard, one type of legislation, one set of, of guidelines. Even in a developed area like Western Europe. We see environmental assessments as uh, key uh, tools for sustainable development. <coughs> we have legislation applied, but uh, yeah. of course it is one thing to have laws on the statute books. It's another uh, thing of having them applied in practice. And here the quality of the information produced by the assessment process is an increasingly important issue. And what our legislation regulates is the process, but of course we cannot regulate the content. The content has to be done in each specific case. And uh, here the commission could be very important to ensure that the content of the assessments which are undertaken is of a sufficient quality and scope in data quality, neutrality, and addressing all the aspects uh, which are relevant for the concrete case. To receive the award on behalf of IIED is Richard Sandbrook, the project co coordinator for the MMSD. Richard has been a founding member of several organisations, including Friends of the Earth International, EarthScan Publications, the UK branch of UNEP, and the European Environment Bureau. He joined IIED in 1976. He became its vice president in 1983, European executive director in 1986, and overall executive director from 89 to 99 when he committed himself to the MMSD project. Richard. I'd like to start by thanking IIA, of course, for this highly distinguished award. 
I have to confess I was wishing to be awarded at some point, but uh, not so soon, so I'm really, really proud of this. But I would also like to um, recognize that uh, and appreciate that I have been selected amongst a pristine group of very highly competent experts in the field of strategic environmental assessment. They are also members of II. The regional award has been presented to Annelies Stolp for the development of the Citizens' Values Assessment Methodology within the Netherlands Ministry of Transport, Public Works and Water Management, or Rijksvaderstaat. We started with the uh, drinking supply, water supply in 1875 with uh, just abstracted water from the dune area. There was a natural reserve of fresh water which was uh, very good and very uh, uh, good for drinking water. And uh, uh, well, the, the water demand uh, expanded and, and goes on and go, goes on. So in the end there was more water abstracted from the dune area than uh, the natural rainfall. Uh, so that was a problem because then uh, the water was, that was abstracted became, to, became uh, salt water from, uh, from the deep down uh, aquifers. And uh, that uh, was the start in fact of the, of the artificial recharge. Uh, besides the natural recharge of, uh, of rainwater, there was a recharge of water from the rivers, which was uh, first not pretreated but uh, in the 70s, uh, the, it was uh, pretreated because of the pollution of the uh, surface water. Uh, in the 90s, a new technique was uh, developed with the deep well system. And a deep well system uh, is a system in which you uh, infiltrate the water uh, in the deeper aquifer with wells, and uh, also you abstract it with uh, wells. After the water is uh, pumped up from the dunes, it has, uh, it's already very good quality, uh, you can, in fact you can drink it directly, but uh, it's yeah, some of more or less groundwater, so we have to uh, pre uh, treat it here on this uh, location uh, and we uh, remove the iron and we put uh, the, the oxygen in it. Uh, well, the water is, is very good, it's pure drinking water and uh, even uh, Heineken uses it for uh, the production of the beer. Well, you are uh, visiting now the area of the of Meindel, which is it's called. It's a dune area close to the city of The Hague, and um, it's a very precious area in, in terms of natural values. There are a lot of species of breeding birds of plants living here, and um, uh, that's what we have to take care of too. Apart from the production of drinking water, which takes place in the area and apart from the recreation function of the area. We have one million visitors a year, every year, and um, that's also some, something we have to deal with. The, the lakes, the, the infiltration lakes, are not uh, supposed to be used for swimming activities. You can look at them, you can sit next to them, and, but you're not allowed to swim in it. I'm working for a company or the state office which is the decision maker in EIA so we have all the problems on our table and uh, well one of the problems we have is to uh, maybe to look at the um, huge amount of material we are getting from the consultants about the EIA or the statements and all the paper and uh, 
The question is, is it really necessary to have all this information and what is relevant and so on? I think that out of this conference we would have an idea, overall idea, on what impact assessment and would be all over the world because it's very nice to have people from everywhere. So I think that's the main thing. I, I, I came here as a, uh, an observer from the private sector of Hong Kong and uh, we, we came here together with a delegation from China and we're trying to find some uh, opportunity, business opportunities in impact assessment in China, Hong Kong and also we are trying to link them together, link China and Hong Kong together with, with the, uh, the rest of the world. Um. Living where I do in northern Canada, it's often difficult to get direct contact with people working on on these sorts of questions. So uh, having the opportunity to talk about it and in an international context is uh, very exciting. We serve our guests uh, fresh salmon, and uh, for the main course we have uh, marinated duck with uh, a similar tropical fruit sauce, and uh, for the dessert we serve uh, lemon tart with a uh, hot vanilla sauce. So we serve a nice white wine and a red wine with it, and uh, we, we end with a cup of coffee and some sweets. This building has a special significance for, for the Netherlands. It's one of the best known and most characteristic locations of our, of, in the history uh, of decision making in our country. This year's winner is Shirley Conover. with great pleasure. I had a wonderful team uh, working with me now for seven months and I'll be there for one more month to uh, close it all off and I hope that uh, you will receive your uh, proceedings on CD-ROM very soon. I really enjoyed this uh, conference and I really hope that I will see you again next year in Maroc. Goodbye. I'd like to say hello, goodbye and see you next year in Morocco. 2003, Vemos vocês todos o ano que vem no Marrocos. Chers amis, au Morocco is a man of star. Aye, aye, member the world. Come, come, come. We show you from Morocco. It's an idea, inshallah. Morocco is a man of star. Kwaerini, Chonani, Morocco, Makaujao. Mina Sam, like this, Morocco, like this show. Here, Bedo, la. Doi, doi, artin ma, Morocco ma. Nos vemos en Marruecos en el 2003. Tot ziens, volgend jaar in Marokko. Je souhaite la bienvenue à toute la communauté internationale pour participer à la, au congrès de l'IAIA 2003 à Marrakech. I tell, je, je dis à toute la communauté internationale, welcome in Marrakech for 
2003. See you again.